Hello, and welcome to what I hope will be the first of a short uh, series of films for parents um, so that they can learn more about what goes on in Key Stage 1 maths lessons um, to improve their own understanding of how, to, how children are taught and in turn be able to better support their children at home. So I'm going to begin by talking about the early stages of addition. It's important that when children first come to school that they understand the term addition and the symbol for it. We start by letting the children physically move counters around and find out for themselves how to add. So they'll be putting um, counters, numbers together, using cubes or buttons or anything they can physically touch themselves. So if they had buttons, they could add two and three together to find that there's five. Once the children are secure in finding a total using any kind of counting material, we like them to move on to using a number line and count them along the number line. In schools, they might find number lines like this. They'll have number lines along the classroom. These number lines are quite easy to make at home. All you need to do is just draw a line and then add in the numbers. Okay, so what you would do is write down the numbers, find the first number of the sum, and then jump on the number of jumps and find which number you get to, and that will give the answer. An example of a sum you could use with a number line would be for, um, 5 add 3. So if I locate 5 on the number line, I jump on 3 numbers, and I get to 8, so 8 would be my answer. This method can also be used with higher numbers, 2-digit numbers and 3-digit numbers. You could also use a ruler which has numbers on. We often use these in the classroom or a hundred square which can be also drawn if you haven't got a copy or you can download them from the internet. Okay. Another method of addition is to partition numbers. To partition simply means to break a number down into tenths and units and look at the value of each different digit. Okay, so if we took the sum 34 out of 25, what we would encourage children to do would be to add the tens separately to the units. So this is how we would set it out in, in, a, in a Key Stage 1 classroom. We would look at uh, 34 as 30 and 4 and 25 as 20 and 5. So then we would just add the 10s, 30 and 20 equals 50, 4 and 5 equals 9. We then put the numbers back together again, 50 and 9 equals 59. We can then do the same addition but crossing over the tens. That means when the answer crosses over a multiple of 10. Okay, we do it in exactly the same way. 50 add 30 equals 80. 7 add 4 equals 11. Now as you can see, the answer doesn't just give us a unit. We've got tens and units. So if the children are more developed in their mathematical skills, we would expect them to be able to do 80 add 11 and know that that was 91. But if they're still in the early stages of their understanding, we would ask them to do 80 add 10 add 1, which is the 11 broken up into 10 and 1. So then the children can simply add 80 and 10, which they know would be 90, then add the 1 is 91. Another method of addition is to use an empty number line. And that is done simply by drawing a line. Okay? And we call it the empty number line, so the children can then make their own number lines. So if we take a sum, for example, 31 and 12, and the children have drawn their empty number line, what we would like them to do is write the first number of the sum at the beginning of the number line. Okay, the children can then jump on by partitioning, exactly the same as we did before, but we're only going to partition the, the second number. So if we've got the second number as 12, we know 12 is made up of 10 and 2. So what we would like the children to do is jump on 10, now, the children should be used to, by this stage, adding multiples of 10 to a number. So the children would know that 31 add 10 would be 41. 41 is then written on the empty number line with the jump of add 10. We're then going to add on the 1s. So I've got 2 to add on. So I can either jump 2 on my number line, adding 1 each time, or I can just jump a 2. Again, it depends on the child and their abilities. It then leads me to the answer, which will be 43. I then record it with my son. The children can use their knowledge of early addition to help them solve harder sums. 
So if we look at the number of bonds to 10 that children learn early on, we have 1 at 9 is 10, 2 at 8 equals 10, 3 and 7 make 10, 4 and 6, and so on. The children can then use this to help them work out more advanced sums. So for example, we've got 51 add 9. The children know that 1 and 9 make 10. So 51 add 9 must take them up to the next multiple of 10, which would be 60. So if a child saw a sum like this, they would quite easily be able to solve it. If we looked at 32 add 8, children know that 2 and 8 is 10. So 32 add 8 equals 40. As you can see, there's a range of strategies that children can use to solve addition problems. It's our job as teachers to give the children experiences in all different areas of addition and the same in all areas of maths. Some children will find one area easier than another. Not all children learn in the same way. So as I, say, as I said before, it's important that we give children a range of strategies for them to choose the one that is most appropriate to their learning style.